Hey, God bless, God bless. Thank you for joining us here today on this wonderful, wonderful Tuesday morning. I want to give you some keys this morning as far as um, intercession. So please come in. Uh, I believe the Lord wants to really give us some good information today. Um, many, of, many of us, please forgive me, many of us are in a place where, you know, the nation needs prayer, families need prayer, marriages need prayer, churches need prayer, and you need prayer. And so I want to give you some keys this morning to uh, bless you as we go on this journey of prayer. Now, let's, let's as we walk this discovery, um, let us first come to terms with the fact that prayer is God's ability to capture us to do his will. God uses prayer um, to maximize his influence in our lives. And um, we're really excited about the opportunity to pray. Um, most often when we're praying, we think that it's to get God to do something. Literally, when we're praying, it's really not to get God something uh, to do something. It's literally for God to get us to do something, for our hearts to change or for us to be able to recognize his word or his position in something. So I want to talk to you today. And prayer goes beyond communication. OK, um, prayer goes beyond communication. Prayer is literally you becoming one with God. You really seeing things from his perspective. And I want to help you. I want to help you this morning. So please join me today by sharing, liking, commenting. Amen. I see a few of you on there. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know why my comments aren't uh, scrolling the way they should. Uh, so I'm not able to acknowledge all of you the way I would like. Please forgive me for all the shaking thing. I'm just, you know, I got a new stand. So... I want to just kind of break this thing open because many of you are praying, praying, praying. And I said I made some statements before uh, that I'm not going to retract in regards to prayer. You know, people say they're praying for you and nothing ever happens for you. Either they got sin, either there's something going on. Um, for me, you know, I, I'm as an apostle, you know, I got many people who want to <clears throat> uh, connect with me or want to look a certain way in my eyes that they're really not. And and I've really experienced some of the bad ordeals that can come from some of these wicked prayer meetings uh, where, where, you know, innocent people become actually workers of witchcraft and rebellion. But that's another conversation for another day. Um, I think that if we are going to pray, we need to know some things about prayer in order to make sure we maximize our moments with God. Now, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees by saying, you want to be heard by the many words that you use. And when he began to deal with them in Matthew chapter five, he talks about their fasting. He talks about their prayer. He talks about their garments. He talks about their way of doing things. And we want to make sure we're not doing what they're doing. Right. So I wanted to just get on here this morning to not only encourage you, but to kind of give you. Uh, some keys to help you in your journey to intercession. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, number one, um, there are two intercessors. There are only two intercessors located in the Bible who have the authority for intercession. I want you to open your Bibles because we're going to go on our Bibles here today before I get in here because I'm going to renew your mind, okay? Uh, we all can participate in intercession, but intercession belongs to only two individuals. There are only two who have the authority for proper um, intercession, who have the authority for proper access to intercede on behalf of a world, a country, a nation. And those two individuals are the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Now, even though we can participate in certain things, um, that is based upon our allegiance to and our ability to navigate with what God has already established. Now, I see my spiritual kids on here. I love you guys. Uh, church members love you guys. We're really going to take this thing. We're going to go to the next level, okay? Number one, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Now, many people don't like to hear this, but the Bible says in Romans 8, 26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought to. 
And I, I've seen books on prayer. I've seen literature on prayer. I've seen all kinds of things on prayer. But the Bible's very clear. It says we don't even know how to pray. And so here's here's the issue that I'm going that I'm attacking today. And then I'm going to give you ten keys on how to pray, but how to intercede professionally and powerfully. So it don't take all your time. It don't take five hours, man. It don't take two hours. If you're in there for that long, that's because you want to be. That's because you want to be. And I understand repetitious prayers and prayers of petitions, but a lot of times we're just wasting our time and we're wasting the Lord's time too. Because there are some things that I realized from Moses, he told Moses, get down out of this cloud of glory and get down there and go deal with that situation. He told Joshua, get up out of this spot. They're sitting in the camp. Go deal with that stuff. So God will kick you out of the prayer closet if there are responsibilities that need to be dealt with. If there are issues that need to be dealt with, God will kick you out of the prayer spot. Okay, and that's there's more times that God has told people you can't come in here like that. The, the, the Bible says the, the, the arm of the Lord is not so short. He cannot reach you. His ear is not so dull. He cannot hear you. But it is your sins that cause a separation between you and God. And sometimes there's something there. The Bible says God will not adhere to the to the prayers of the wicked because they are an abomination to him. So I'm not worried about people praying bad stuff about me because it's not going to fall on me. God's not hearing that. You, I mean, you got we, we got we got to learn how to renew our minds minds and get God's view in reference to prayer. So I want to do that today. Now, the Bible is very clear. There's only two people who have the keys to intercession and you need a personal relationship with both of them. If you intend on being effective in what we call intercession, intercession is more, it's more, it's more about um, being the individual who was standing between something more than it is praying for someone. Jesus is the intercession. He is the mediator. He is mediator and intercession are the same thing. He is the negotiator. He is the advocate. He is our he is our uh he is our defense attorney. He is the representation of full of the full spectrum of what it means to intercede. Moses also moved in intercession. When the Bible says stand in the gap, what is God talking about? I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap or a woman that will stand in the gap. What God is talking about is talking about an individual who will stand between me and the people, who will be the one who will be my delegate and who will be the one who will represent the people before me. That's why there was Moses, then there was Aaron, because Moses was representing God, then there was Aaron who was representing the people. Jesus is, is the prophet and Jesus is the priest. Come on, I feel like preaching, but I'm not going to preach today because I got to teach. Now, there are only two who hold the keys to intercession. That's the Holy Spirit and that's the Son of God. Now, when I first came up in when I first came up in my Christian walk very early, I was the type of person, I came in with my ritualistic prayer. I had to have this moment of time and I had to, it had to be this specific time and it, and I didn't understand the principle of being led. I only, I only understood the principle of ritual of rote, doing things by rote and ritual and, and practice and being very habitual. But what I begin to discover is that the Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. That word sons and daughters of God is techna. That's different from John chapter 1 verse 12 where it says we have the authority to become as we have received him we have the authority to become sons and daughters. So that's a different word. That word in John chapter 1 that is the word Techna, which means little children. The word led, though in Galatians, where it talks about those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God, that word is huios. The word huios means mature. It means you have developed. It means you have a maturation in being led. You have a maturation in following God. You are seeking God to follow him. Now, there's a difference there because children are called to develop. Just like in every area of leadership or every area of ministry, there's always an infancy because God is always bringing us into the unknown. Y'all need to listen to me. There is always a measure that we are developing from. That's why we stay teachable. There are different levels of intimacy that we're, I mean, infancy in intimacy that we are being brought into because God is always leading us into places that have been undiscovered, especially if you have a fervent, a fervent, vibrant a relationship with God. God is going to lead you into areas. The Bible says he will show us things that we have not known. And in those places that you have not known, it is new to you. It is new to you and it is new. 
for you. Now, the Bible says this, Romans chapter 8, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our infirmities, for we don't know how to pray as we ought to, but it is the Spirit that makes intercessions for us with groans and utterings which we do not know. Now, some of you don't realize this, but your spirit is in prayer. There's a time when your spirit is so connected to the Lord that I can look at stuff and my prayer is released. I can think about things and my prayer is released. People pop up in my spirit and my prayer is released because God will show me what they need, where they need. I'm, that's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. What happens? That's when you're praying in the spirit. It's not just and it's not just you uh, 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 um, um, using your mouth, but prayer is done in the spirit. And sometimes your spirit, now watch this. How do you think they talked in the garden of Eden? They didn't, they didn't, there was no language. How do you think a serpent was able to talk to a woman or a man? There was no language. The, the Bible gives us a key to that. In Corinthians, it says there will be no knowledge. There will, knowledge will cease. Prophecy will cease. Tongues will cease. Speech will cease. So at the end of the day, how are we going to communicate on a higher level? I believe we're going to just know. The Bible says we have an anointing and we're going to know all things. Y'all better listen to this revelation because I'm going to take you to the next level. You're going to know all things. That means you're going to be able to communicate on a higher level of intelligence to where you're going to know. I'm just going to know what you're saying. And I'm going to communicate back to you. And you're going to know what I'm saying. And our lips ain't going to be moving. Our mouths ain't going to be moving. I remember testimonies of when the presence of God showed up with a couple of men, uh, uh, great men of God. They had testimonies when the Lord showed up for them. And it was like everything was suspended in time. It's like everything in the environment knew the Lord was there. Because we know that what we're sitting on and all the materials that we're in contact with, they're all moving. And the reason why something is solid, because it's moving so fast that it has no gaps in it. Everything under a microscope is moving. So even your chair is moving, but it's moving so fast that you can sit. The materials are moving so fast that you can sit on them and they're, co they're considered a solid. The materials that move super slow are the ones that you can move through like, like air. It's, it's moving, but it's slow. It's got gaps. Rasha Kalavaya. It's not dense. Okay. And that's science one-on-one, but we're not in science today. Okay. But God is omniscient. So the Bible says he, he's all knowing or it's all science. Science is about knowing now. The Bible says in 27 and Romans 8, 27, it says he searches the hearts knowing, knowing, there it is, knowing, that's that higher level of communication, knowing what is the mind of the spirit. Remember, the communication is on a different level when you get in the spirit. God is bringing you into the spirit. Your mouth is not always going to be necessary. That's why the Bible says there's a groan. Mm, mm. Are you ever, you ever remember growing up? Never mind. That's off topic. But you ever remember when people would get in trouble and the, and, and the older ladies and the older people in the church be like, mm. well, that was the groan. That was the utter. That was like, Lord, help him. Mm. That was a Lord, help him groan. Right now. Watch this. Uh, Romans 27 says that he searches the hearts. There's the Holy Spirit. And knows, knoweth what's in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, there's only two people in the New Testament that carry the mantle for intercession. Now, I, I know some of y'all going to get upset with me, but I'm going to tell you right now, you can do nothing apart from Christ. You can do nothing apart from the Holy Ghost. And the only reason why we're doing whatever we're, whatever it is that we're called to do is because we're participating with their level of ministry here on the earth. Whatever they have designated, the lines they have drawn out, the system they put in place, the operation that the Father has given us, because the Bible says there's many operations and administrations, but there's one Father, there's one God, whatever he has designated for our life. Just like the, the seashore, he has created the borders and he has caused those waters not to recede past those borders. He's also created borders in your life for your ministry. That's why transgression was a sin. Why? Because people were going beyond the borders. Whatever God prescribed for your life. Amen. God puts borders on people. God puts borders in creation. Why? Because we need something to hold everything together. Are you listening to me? So God even put a border on intercession. That's why demonic uh, demonic things can happen when you're not. Uh, watch this. To operate in the spirit without the Holy Spirit opens you up to other spirits. To operate. I need y'all to hear me. To operate outside of the word. To try to do something spiritual without the Holy Spirit will open you up to other spirits. There are other things that will come into your life. They are waiting for you. 
And and that's why these prayer groups are shifting. That's why these that's why these ministries are shifting because people have decided that the word of God is not good enough. They've decided that following the Holy Spirit is not good enough. I don't know about you, but I would not be where I am if it was not for the Holy Ghost talking to me. The Bible says you'll hear a voice right behind you saying, Don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. Walk, this is the way, walk ye therein. There is a voice of the Lord. Notice that Elisha. Elisha had to learn how to lean on the Holy Spirit. He's looking for God. God said, go stand in this place and I'm going to come over there and meet you there. So he goes and stands on the, on the edge of the, the cliff and the Lord comes. There's an earthquake that, and the Bible says the earthquake passed, passed before the Lord, but the Lord wasn't in it. The, the Bible says there's a whirlwind. The wind ripped off the mountain. The Bible says the wind passed before the Lord and the Lord wasn't in it. The Bible says there was a fire that came and came and sat on the mountain. And the Bible says that the fire was before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the fire. Then there was a still small voice. What was God trying to communicate to Elijah? He was trying to communicate that, listen, even though I've moved with methods before, I'm not telling you to master a method. I'm telling you to master my person. You need to get to know me. You need to know that I'm, I, I, I communicate on a different level. I commute. See, this is the problem with the church. The prophetic is going to die if we don't discover how to deal with the brass serpent. The prophetic ministry and all of these spirits, as far as Python and all this stuff, they are suffocating and killing the communication of the prophetic in the church, in the church, because we're prone to the methods of before. And we don't realize that, okay, God's wisdom, I put up a post and most people don't understand that God's wisdom is God's wisdom, but there was a wisdom under the law, but you can't use that wisdom under grace. And you're not going to use that wisdom in the millennial kingdom because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever as a person, but he can choose to do things differently because he's sovereign. God is not confined to our way of doing things. And sometimes we don't realize that we make, we make methods out of, out of a moment. God said, this was just for the moment, Moses. I gave you this bush just for you. Don't you dare go preaching the bush over here to the church. The church don't even understand the bush because they don't even understand shaking the dust off their feet. And when I told you to take your sandals off, it was because of the dust. Another conversation for another day. Now, with that being said, let's move on. The second person who has authority in intercession. When I'm done with this, I'm going to give you 10 keys and I guarantee your intercession is going to change. You're not going to have to be wasting your time. Listen, man, there are times that I'm in the presence of God and God starts talking. And, you know, and it's not even God. It's just me. You know, when you carry people in your spirit. When you get in your prayer closet and you've been carrying people, you get in there and you be trying to love on the Lord and then all of the people stuff start popping up. Anybody ever have that where you just get in a prayer closet and you want to spend time with the Lord, but then all of this other stuff starts popping up. You got all of this other stuff. I need y'all to share this. Everybody needs to share this because we need to, we need to level up our intercept. It's taking too long to get an answer from the Lord. When the Bible says in first John that if I pray according to his will, then the spirit of God that knows the will of God will give me the will of God. When I pray that will, I'm paraphrasing that he will answer. The Bible says in John chapter 15, that I abide in him, his words abide in me, and whatever I ask, he will give it to me. So why is it taking so long to get an effective manifestation? And I'm going to deal with a video, I think this whole week, I'm going to deal with intercession because if we got access to God, there ain't no way my prayers ain't being answered. If I say I'm praying for you, or if I... Let me tell you the highest manifestation. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on in my mind because I'm excited over this topic. I love prayer. I love prayer. I love prayer. Now, so watch this. I'm excited about this topic because I'm going to open up some things. And by the time you're done, you're going to see your angel. You're going to see de the demonic entities. You're going to see them really strong. So I don't want you. God said, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. But he's going to open you up. God is going to open you up because you now need to see that there are more with you than, than are against you. But you, if God's going to open you up to the spiritual realm, you're going to see everything. Okay, you're going to see it all. You're going to see the shadow, those little shadows that just run by. And you're like, what was that? I, there was nothing there. That was a demon. That was a demon. God's going to open you up today. Well, throughout this week, God's going to open you up because we're going to go into that place. We need to go into that place, the place that he died for us to get into. We need to get from out of this outer court mentality, this third grader mentality in relation to prayer. And when I pray, I'm not praying, trying to get God to do something. I'm praying because God already did it. 
I'm just saying, I'm in agreement with you. See, my prayer is not me trying to fabricate something for God to answer. My prayer is, Lord, you. this is what you say. This is what you do. And I'm here to just announce to you, I'm in agreement. I'm going to see this thing because this is what, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to fabricate a system to make me look good, neither. Listen, I get answer prayer. Don't get it wrong. I get answer prayer. The Lord answers me. He answers me by fire. He answers me by wind. He answers me any way he wants to. But at the end of the day, it's all about really going in and making sure I'm not wasting his time. I don't want to waste his time. He's valuable to me. And I'm valuable to him. I want him to get the best experience out of my life. And the best way he's going to do it is through prayer. Why? The, and, let me, and let me give this to you in simplest terms. The reason why there's prayer, we know God has already done everything that needs to be done on the earth. There's nothing new under the sun. We already know that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Why pray? Why pray? Why pray? Why do we even have prayer? The apostle said that we are to tend to the ministry of the word and prayer. Why? Prayer is separate from word. Why? Because prayer is a ministry in itself. Why? Because there's two people that's interceding in prayer and there's no way for me to really connect with them, really discover their voice, really know who they are, really know how they function, and also be able to determine when they're speaking to me differently that it's really God is through prayer because they begin to capture me. That's how God captures you. Yeah, you say, but you ain't captured. You ain't captured yet. You a son of God. You ain't a servant yet. You ain't a slave of Jesus. Come on. I feel like preaching. This is so good. <laughs> this is so good. I love prayer. I promise you. God is stirring you up. Some of y'all going to go in your prayer closet right after this. Thank you, Father. God desires you to pray, but he's saying, listen, y'all not praying the way I'm, watch this. Let me tell you something. When I go into the presence of God, it's like, what do you want me to do? I don't just go in there and be like, okay, I got my list. So-and-so told me I need to pray right now. They say I need to keep it in prayer. And I, I don't go in like that. I have, there's an agenda, there's a schedule, and it's whatever the Lord wants. If the Lord want me to kneel, I'm going to kneel. If the Lord want me to wash dishes, I'm going to wash dishes. If the Lord want me to clean, if you want me to handle my responsibility while he want to talk to me and want me to pray, guess what? I have liberty. I have freedom. I can pray from any posture and still get a result because prayer is spiritual. Now, you may manifest and buckle over and raise your hands and do whatever, whatever helps you because they're called prayer postures, but there's also prayer preparations. Did you catch what I'm saying? Sometimes the preparation for your prayer may be bowing. Sometimes the preparation for your prayer may be, you know, you got to be in a closet. You got to be in a corner. You got to be laid out on a rug. You got to have your head covered. I mean, whatever helps you to get into that place. Some of y'all need music. Whatever helps you, then do what, do what you do. But make sure you realize that you are called to be led. So once the preparation happens, the instructions need to happen. This is when we request the Lord, what is it that you desire of me? When the Bible says, present your body as a living. My God, today, I'm trying to get into my scriptures. I think this just turned into a master class or something. Good God Almighty. I need everybody to hit the share button. Come on, I need y'all to hit that share button. This is very important. Now, who's the second person who possesses the authority in the matter? Now, watch this. I would never say, now, some people are going to get mad at me, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I will never say that my ministry is a ministry of intercession. I would say I'm participating in intercession because I am participating with the captain of inter. That's not my ministry. Your ministry, according to Jesus, is making disciples. See, they're not ready for that type of stuff. They're not ready for that type of stuff. Because folks gonna get mad at me because the church never gave you any other position. So now all of a sudden you want to be an intercessor. Intercession is a part of your life, just like evangelism is a part of your life. The Bible says, let everybody do the work of an evangelist. There are some things that are just a part of your, your byproduct of being saved. That's your salvational. This is the least I can do for you, Lord package. Did you catch what I'm saying? 
This is the least I can do to, 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 to prove the good and acceptable, the, the, the will of, come on, and perfect will of God. Now, okay, I get really excited. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Now watch this. It's talking about Jesus. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. It says, Wherefore, he is able to save them to the othermost that come unto God by him, seeing he liveth forever to make intercession for them. So what is intercession? What is intercession? Intercession is the go-between. Intercession is the go-between. It's the person or the people who stand in the stead of a particular situation or a particular um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, piece to the puzzle of what God wants to produce. Or it's it's it, it could be anything. It could be a plethora of things. It's like uh, civil leaders today. We have a, a, a civil unrest right now because of everything that's going on in the world, the racism, the systematic racism, and all these things that are being going on. And, and I'm going on the record to say, I think this stuff needs to be changed, but it's not going to be changed until we start changing laws. We need to acknowledge that it's law breaking and we need to change laws. And it's being produced by the spirit of witchcraft and the spirit of lawlessness. No one wants to submit to authority. But once again, another topic for another day. We're talking about prayer. Now, the Bible says that Jesus forever liveth to make intercession for the saints. But on the cross, he said, it is finished. So intercession carries a more in-depth uh, a level of requirement to finalize its ministry. Now, the cross could be finished by a death. But intercession must be continually made until a completion is established. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Now, listen, I'm going to take, I got to take you to the next level because some of y'all thinking that just because we say we at the end, we at the end of the road. No, when Jesus says, sit down and count the cost, it's going to cost you something to enter into the will of God. It's going to cost you something to stand in the will of God. That's why you got to have armor. You got to have certain things in play. That's why there's so many other instructions for the church. And if there was nothing else left to do, why do we have a whole system of a whole book of instructions on what to do after being saved? We got the Holy Ghost. Come on. We got the Bible. We got the word of God. We say we sanctify filled with the Holy Ghost. But you still need development. You still need revelation. You still need an understanding. You need practice. You need growth. You know, there's certain things that, that we need that, we, that we're not going to watch this. And God placed it in people. Listen, God is on the throne. God, listen, God is on the throne. But Jesus released gifts that work through people. Why? Because we need development. After Pentecost, we got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, everybody got the Holy Ghost. We're one with God. We're one spirit with the Lord. But God said, that ain't enough. Y'all need individuals to help you develop. Okay? You need people to help you mature. You need mentors. Let, let, you, watch this. The Bible says we do not, we may have a lot of teachers, but we do not have many fathers or mothers. And I put mothers there because there are spiritual mothers. There are spiritual fathers. There are female apostles. The Bible records them. Come on. Females in leadership. Okay? Hallelujah. And if you don't agree with that, just throw your Bible out. If you're, going to pick it, if you're going to pick it apart, just go ahead and throw the whole thing out. And let's see how you make it. Okay? Now, two, intercession deals with inter, intercession deals with the go-between. Okay? It deals with the ability to stand in between to become a bridge so that what needs to come from heaven can come to the earth and what needs to come from the earth can go to heaven. That's all intercession is about. That's why the Bible says that God said, will there be a man? Is there any man who would stand in the gap? Whenever there's a gap, there is a requirement for intercession. Oh, Rabbi Soko Talabaya. There are different levels of prayer. Timothy talks about different levels of prayer. There's Thanksgiving. There's worship. Come on. There's, there's praise. All right. And then there is intercession. And it is to be made by all the saints. All right. Even in the armor of God. What is the purpose of the armor of God? The purpose of the armor of God is verse 18. So that you can pray all prayers and all supplications in the spirit. The whole purpose of the armor of God is to help assist you while you in prayer. Why? Because you're going in dimensions. You're going in areas and you need 
that you need that armor on to deal with the powers and the principalities and where you think you're going to encounter them at. You're encountering them in prayer. Oh, this is so good. You know this is so good. I need everybody to hit the share button. Okay, number one. Okay, so let's give you some effective principles for um, intercession. I already laid out the groundwork. Who are the two intercessors in the New Testament? Who are the two intercessors? Because the Bible says we don't even know how to pray. So that just shuts every intercessor. That shuts that down. If you're not partnering with the Holy Spirit, you're not interceding. If you're not partnering with the Son. And now watch this. That changes your level of intercession because now you're saying, God, shh. Let me, give me the things you want me to pray. That's what I learned a long time ago. I said, Lord, what you want me to pray? Because God needs a mouth in the earth. How can they be saved unless someone preach? How can they hear? It's about the ear. That's why itching ears are dangerous because the earth and the devils and demons require a mouth. That's why they like to oppress people or possess people because they can use your faculties. They can use who you are. They can use what you have to move the earth, to move the spirit realm, to move. Sir. Come on, guys. Necromancing and all that stuff is what Rasha Kalaba. demons use people just like God uses people because there's principles, underlining principles in the earth. Are you listening to me? Now, don't jump on here if you just want to be, I'm just going to be saved and all I want to hear, Christ crucified and all that, and that's perfect, but don't jump on this video because I'm going to take you places that you might not want to go. They will be in the spirit, but and some of you are going to get there eventually, but you, if you're planning on intercessing, if you're planning on leading that church or covering that church or being in prayer, you need to know what you're doing. You don't just be, you don't be, you don't practice intercession. I'm just telling you right now, you, you going to practice, you want to practice, inter practicing intercession is just like practicing exorcism or casting out demons. Okay. Some of these folks, it, it, that's like the seven sons of Sceva. They practice uh, they, they were little exorcists, but they were practicing casting out devils. And because they were not registered, they did not know the Lord. They did not know God. Then what happened? What happened? The demon was allowed to manifest and do whatever they wanted to do. And when y'all up in there, y'all interceding, y'all praying and y'all doing all this stuff, you need to know that you are partnering with a power and an authority that is bigger than yours. If you think it's your intercession, you we're going to see how powerful your intercession is because them demons is going to challenge your authority. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Paul never came in his own authority. What, what, what people don't realize is Paul said, I count it all as dung that I might know him. He said, I rest in his authority. Apart from Christ, I can do nothing. See, he never took anything on himself. Y'all need to listen to me. If you want to go higher in the Lord, you can take nothing on yourself. You got to take everything. What you take nothing. You can't nothing that you that you can take it on you. The only thing that you can do is say, I'm standing in what he did. I'm standing in his authority. I'm standing in his power. He placed me here. So my prayer is now what he gave me. To, I could say that. That's why y'all got these retaliation. These retaliation prayers. Lord, please begin. No, we don't want no retaliation or backlash. There ain't no retaliation or backlash when God has positioned you. The devil couldn't touch Job because God positioned Job. Y'all not. Y'all not. Y'all not ready. Y'all not ready, man. Yo, 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 yo. My God today. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, it says, man, whatsoever born of God, whatsoever born of God, the seed remaineth in him and they keep themselves and the wicked one could touch them not. There are places you could be in God. The reason why we're getting whooped in some of the areas that we're ministering in is because we're not submitting to God. We're trying to resist the devil, but we're not submitting to God. And how can you submit when you don't know who's running what? If you think you're running it, 
You just open yourself up because they're going to test your authority. That's why in miracles and signs and wonders, we I get a lot of miracles. I get a lot of signs. Do you want to know why? Because I don't stand in my own power. I don't stand in my own track record. I raised the dead twice. I've dead there. I've seen bones, bones in my hand come to the Lord twice. I, you know, I've seen eyes that straighten out. I've seen tumors dry up. I've seen ears pop. And the person can hear their voice for the first time ever with the little hearing machine that had to be put in their brain so they can hear. Come on. I've seen great, crazy men. People get in our church. My church sees it. They get out of wheelchairs. They come in in a wheelchair. The usher's bringing them in. They get up at the front and they walk in. Real talk. But that's not my authority. I'm not moving in what I got. I had nothing. I was a sinner. I was an evil, wicked man. I had no plans. I had no destiny. God gave me an opportunity, an opportunity to trust, an opportunity to believe. And that's all we got. We got we to gotta keep it like that. We got to keep it like that. Are you listening to me? Because a lot of people, the reason why we have moral, moral failures in Christianity and all this kind of stuff is because we start elevating ourselves. The Bible says, be careful that you don't exalt yourself above measure. And that's why Paul had a thorn. <laughs> Many of us got thorns today because we have this thing where we're just going beyond what God called us to do. And I'm not talking about your service. I'm talking about your your. The stature that God gave you. I'm talking about the posture that God gave you. You know, sometimes we get above that. Po Listen, man, I'm telling I think this thing just turned into a humility. I think one of the keys to effective uh, intercession is going to be humility. Whatever God says, I say. Whatever's God, whatever God has done, I agree with. Whatever God is doing, I'm going to do. Come on. I don't need nothing new. I don't need nothing. I don't, I'm not chasing revelation. I'm not. Listen. I still ain't discovered everything else that God is revealing in his word. I still ain't just, man, come on here. And I get revelation, but the point is, is like, man, I, you got to be like a child. You got to become as a child. Okay, so number one, effective keys to intercession. Number, number one, after knowing that the ministry belongs to the Holy Spirit and the ministry belongs to the Son, now let's dive into the principles. Number one, you got to enter and praise God for who he is. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God for those who come to him must believe that he is first and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now, everybody likes the rewarder of those that diligently seek him, but you don't get no reward and it's impossible to diligently seek. If you're not coming to God for who he is, if you're coming to God just because you have a need all the time, you want God to do something all the time, you're not going to be effective in intercession. You're not going to be effective in intercession. But when you're able to discover like, wow, I get to talk to God. I get to, man, I love it. Oh, I love, I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. When you realize that you get to talk to God, you, I get to participate with the with the councils of heaven. Intercession is about you basically having a conversation with the Son and the Holy Ghost, and you're active in that. Come on, you're active like that. It's like double dutch, man. You wait your turn. Intercession is really about you waiting your turn. That's why you gotta have good ears. You got to know when to speak. You don't just run in there. The Bible says, be still and know that he is God. So if you're coming in to know him for who he is, you need to learn how to be still. You got to learn how to be like, okay, I'm here. Whatever you want. You know, I love you. There's nothing else that I require of you. But I'm here. I feel the anointing even right now. I'm here for you. When you come like that, my God, today, I might leave y'all and go on a prayer spot. I'm probably going to have to leave you. <laughs> um, the point is, is when you come in like that, the Lord is ready. He's ready to receive you. Prayer is intimacy. Prayer is intimacy. And women, if you marry, you can't just be going in there and just doing whatever the husband, you don't want your husband to just come in there and just grab you and do whatever. No, some of y'all want him to kiss you, hug you, whatever. Come on here. You can't do that in your prayer spot. You can't do that in your prayer spot. Come on. You have to be the same way. 
What do you want me to do, Lord? How are how how do you want me to present myself? How 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 come on, you gotta learn these things, man, because what's gonna happen? What what had happened was is you're gonna mess up the whole quality of the time you could be spending in the presence of God because you're trying to control the atmosphere. Intercession is not about our control. It's about us losing control in the presence of God. I say the maturity of the Christian is your ability to lose control and give it to God and let God control you. You can't say you're a mature Christian and you're still in control. The river that flows from God, the last level was the loss of all control. It went to your ankles, it went to your knees, it went to your waist, and then all of a sudden you found out you lost control. Karabadarabasata. All right, number two. Number one is you got to praise him for who he is. So when you go in there, you really need to be acknowledging the Lord. Lean not on your own understand on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all his ways. Number two, make sure your heart is clean before God. Make sure your heart is clean before God. You got to give the Holy Spirit time to convict you. Come on, you got to give the Holy Spirit time to convict you. A lot of times we'll run in there and be like, Lord, forgive me this. Lord, forgive me that. Lord, forgive me this. And we're doing this whole big old thing. And the Lord is like, listen, I don't want, I, I don't want what you're telling me. I want you to hear what I'm telling you. And I want you to respond to what I'm telling you. And then when you respond to what I'm telling you, then we can have a discussion. Oh, this is what I found. Most of the most of the things that God is doing in my life, they come on the heels of allowing him to talk to me and then discovering a way to communicate back to him uh, and, and confession. Now, confession is based on saying the same thing. Well, how can I say the same thing if I'm not hearing anything? Are you listening to me? Some of us are just running and saying, Lord, forgive me. That's like somebody saying, hey, please forgive me if I have done anything wrong to you. What you mean if? You and I both know you did. You know, you know, that's like somebody saying, like, you know, when you say, Lord, please forgive me. The Lord said, for what? For what? You need to tell me what I saw. You need to tell me what I experienced. David said, before you and you alone have I sinned. He said, forgive me of this sin. He said, I've done this. I've done that. David came all the way clean. God bless y'all. Thank you for joining. Come on, keys to effective uh, intercession. So number one, praise God for who he is. Number two, make sure your heart is clean. Give the Holy Spirit time to convict you because there may be some unconfessed sin there because we're, we're always quick to come in and, and watch this. A lot of times we're not we don't remember the areas that we messed up because if we're not confessing at the moments that we mess up, it's easy to forget sin. And that's what the devil likes us to do. He wants you to forget. So you start losing fire. You start losing passion. You start losing momentum. And then all of a sudden, watch this. You're now in a place where you're like, why am I so burdened? It's because you've been praying, you've been worshiping. And the Bible says, Today is the day of salvation. Hear my voice and do not harden your hearts. So the more that you're not hearing, but the more contact you're having with God, but you're not hearing what he's truly saying, your heart begins to harden. That's why I don't preach the gospel to people who refuse it a whole lot, because the more you preach it and the more they don't hear it, the harder it is for them to come into the kingdom. Come on, there's principles to this. Come on, let's go. Number three, you are to acknowledge you cannot really pray without the direction and the and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we cannot pray the way we ought to. Now, Paul in the Holy Spirit pins this. To, and Paul was a man of prayer. Paul was, he prayed without ceasing. And yet he's, he came to a place of discovery where he said, man, I don't know how to pray. And I believe the reason why we have such a strong prophetic move right now is because prophecy is also a part of prayer. We don't know how to hear. We don't know what to say. So that God speaks to people and has them say what needs to be said so that the atmosphere can be an atmosphere of prayer. Now with Muslims, they put it on a megaphone and they send their prayer out into the atmosphere. With Christians, God puts it on a spiritual megaphone and starts raising up leaders and they start prophesying. Man, I feel like preaching. Come on, man. That's some good stuff. 
That's some good stuff. We need to ask God to utterly control. Now, once again, prayer intercession is literally about you being controlled. Now you can enter prayer where you're controlling it in the sense of you're praising God, you're thanking God or whatever. But when you enter into intercession, which is a deeper measurement of prayer, you're going to have to learn that you're going to have to lose control and let the Holy Spirit give you what he's going to give you. Now, some of you might have a question where you're saying, okay, we have specific things we need to pray for. Well, then here is the principle and the pattern. You wait. You don't just jump into the topic. You wait. Now, I'm not telling you to wait 10 minutes, 15 minutes when you only got a 30 minute prayer session and you're opening up something that you're praying for somebody. But you, it, it, even before you get up there and grab that mic, you should be in a place where you're already acknowledging God for who he is. You're already making sure the Holy Spirit's allowed to convict you. You're already allowing yourself to, to acknowledge that you need the Holy Spirit to give you what you need to say in reference to this and that you're, you're ready to lose control. The minute you lose control, the only place you're safe losing control is in prayer. You're not safe losing control in prophecy. That's why the Bible says when one prophesies, the other prophets must judge. Why? Because there needs to be a measure of control. But your one-on-one, -on -one, your individual communication with God, you are now putting faith completely on the Holy Spirit to lead you into that place and the Son to bring you to that place where you're now praying what they're praying, you're seeing what they're seeing, you're doing. I'm opening you up. This is a master class. I'm giving you a master class today because you need to get from that place where you've been. You need to get to the next place where God needs you. Amen. And if you guys are interested and you want to sow, amen, inbox me. Go ahead and inbox me. Amen. It's a good, that's a good place to sow a seed. Amen. Number four, it says deal aggressively. You're going to have to deal aggressively with the enemy. You're going to have to come against him in all of the power and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, and with the word of God, you're going to have to submit to God while you're in this place of submission. See, intercession is so powerful. Why? Because once you are out of control and the spirit has full control, you're fully submitted unto God. Now you resisted. Some of y'all say, well, I resisted the devil, but he keep coming back. It's because you're not resisting him from the place of intercession. Rosh my God, today, this is a good class. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. That was a good place, guys. You could sow a seed. I just pinned it there in the cash app. Amen, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Patrice. Now, you, you want to contend with the enemy. You need to deal with him aggressively, but respectfully. The Bible says that Michael did not release a rally accusation. And the problem is we try to fight the devil with his tools. You can't slander the, the slanderer. You can't slander. You got to fight him with God's tools. You got to fight him with God's empowerment. You got to fight him with God's authority. Okay. You fight him with the word. The word says. The Lord rebuke you. Notice what Michael did. Michael did not move in his own authority. That's why we be losing, man. I be sitting back watching people lose. And it's because I know who I am. Well, don't let you knowing who you are forget who's running the show. I'm going to say that one more time. Don't let you knowing who you are make you forget who's running the show. And you can't just run out there and do, my kids are my kids. But my five-year-old's my five-year-old. There's some things that she's not allowed to do. Why? Because of age, because of development, because of where she is. She needs more assistance. Did you catch what I just said? All right. Number five, in intercession, to be effective, you got to die to your own imaginations. You got to die to your own desires. You got to die to your burdens for what you feel you need to pray for. Once again, if you feel like you're praying for people, what I found is best, write everything down on a paper, put everything on the notes of your cell phone, whatever, whatever the case may be. And while you're in intercession, lay on it, lay on top of your paper, 
lay on top of you. Put it in the atmosphere. Where Put it on your wall. Put it wherever because the glory knows how to stick on things. The anointing attaches to surfaces and, and cloths and towels and papers and, and all that stuff. It, it, whatever the case may be, we got to realize that we have the power that when we're in that moment in that glory cloud, when you're in that anointing and that presence, you're able to literally transfer that power. That's why the sweat from Paul was, the anointing was transferred to the sweat. The anointing will transfer, okay? And it will go right to that prayer. It will get right in the spirit and they will get everything they need. But you're going to have to, you can't come in and just be like, this is what I'm praying for. This is what I feel like doing. No, not when you're interceding. Not when you're interceding. Not when you're interceding, okay? Now, number six. You need to praise God now in faith for remarkable prayer meetings that you're going to have. Now, here's something that I have encountered that is pretty, uh, it's pretty weird when I, when I see it, it's we're, we're, we're saying we believe God, but when we start praying to God, we're not praying from a place of belief. We're praying from a place of being double-minded in the sense of, we don't know if God's really going to do this. Like, you ever know those prayers? Like you'd be like, well, if it be your will, man, that right there, that's a pet peeve for me. That is a pet peeve. Woo, that is a pet peeve. Because if I'm yielding to the Holy Spirit and I'm committing myself to prayer, I'm praying like this thing is going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then at least I can say, well, then that wasn't what God wanted. But based on the history, God is healed. God is you know, touch, God is blessed, God is moved, God is good. I'm moving based on what God, come on, come on, I'm being, I'm going off of history, I'm going off of records, I'm going off of information, so I'm not going to come in here and already be defeated in my prayer time, listen, when I pray, the presence of God shows up, that's just a part of the agreement. So I'm not praying, Lord, please send your presence, God send you. No, I'm usually saying, Lord, give me more. When I say more, more represents I'm already possessing something. I'm already partaking of something. I'm already receiving something. I'm not trying to initiate nothing. The Son of God already initiated it by his resurrection. The Holy Spirit already established it by his sealing. We already contain this. This is ours. Are you listening to me? I need everybody to hit that share button. Put people's names in there. Y'all need to start tagging folks. Come on, guys. Amen. Come on. Put the, lift, it, lift, lift, lift it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on with the next points. I need you all to share. Come on. I need you to. I need you to. Come on. Father, I just pray right now that all those that need to be on this line will now flood to this line now in the name of Jesus. Father, those that are serious about interceding, those that are serious about opening up and going to the next dimension of prayer. Those who are serious about answer prayer. Those who are serious about their time. Those who want to be effective for you. God, that they would begin to flood this line right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh yeah. I could talk about prayer shawls too, <laughs> but we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that on a later moment. We'll deal with that on a later moment. You know, because some people, they might need sandals. They're going to get upset with me. But I, I got some I got some real spiritual truth in regards to that. Like, you guys really aren't going to see my prayer shawl. Before, you would, but you're not going to see it. Why? Because that's my secret. Bang, bang. But that's another topic for another day. Now, uh, number seven. Number seven. So, number one, we need to acknowledge God for who he is. Number two, make sure our hearts are clean. Number three. We need to uh, lean on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. We need to lose, lose control in the presence of the Holy Spirit in prayer. We don't lose control in anything else, but we do have permission to lose control in prayer uh, so the Holy Spirit can take over. Number four, we are to deal aggressively with the enemy. You are to confront him in the power and the stand, the authority of Jesus Christ, and you are to use the word. You don't use his tactics. You don't start calling them names. You don't start getting into that because you're going to lose. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Fabiola, we love you. 
And so number seven, uh, number five, you got to get rid of your own imaginations, your own desires and burdens. A lot of times the number one issue that blocks true intercession is flesh itself, itself, it's flesh. And we don't even know that we're doing it, but we're doing it because we're coming in with our own plan. We're thinking this is what it's going to be. And the Lord is saying, listen, you are one of the worst things. That's why racism is witchcraft, because racism, the parents of racism is preference and bias. You being biased or you preferring a particular thing above something else. That's why preference and bias, that means you're coming in telling God what you're going to do. And that deactivates the whole move of God. OK, or the whole quality of what God really wants to do. OK, now, number six. You need to you need to stand in a position of faith. So when you're praying, you're praying from a place of God is going to do this. This is something that has already been recorded in heaven. I'm just here on this date on planet Earth to state it so it can be released to the earth. OK, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth. Now, number seven, it is wait before God in silent expectancy. We need to learn how to wait. While expecting God to do, you need to know that when I pray, I'm going to get a testimony. I'm not praying, watch this. I'm not praying to see if something might happen. I'm praying because I know something's going to happen. All right. Verse uh, number, number eight. Um, one of the keys is in obedience and faith, you got to utter what God brings to your mind and you got to be believing it. Once again, that confirms what I just spoke. And then you keep asking God for direction, not always for the same thing. See, this is the problem that we have with the persistent widow. She kept asking for the same thing. Well, what, what Jesus was revealing most there in that parable about that widow who was able to force the king to give her what she wanted, even though he didn't want to give it to her. Uh, is literally talking about the passion for prayer more than the purpose. It's talking about a passion for prayer that you're, it's talking about really a posture of faith where you're saying, I'm praying and I'm asking because you have the authority to give it to me and you're going to give it to me and I ain't going to stop until you give it to me. But you can also have that in a moment of prayer. It doesn't have to take seasons of prayer. It can be in a moment of prayer. You can have that like the, the, the Seraphonician woman that said, hey, I'm not leaving until you heal, heal my daughter. Like I eat the bread. I eat the bread. The crumbs off the off the floor. You know what I'm saying? Um, she she she's like he called her dog. He said, I, I don't care about that. Even dogs eat the crumbs off the table. He told her I'm not here for you. He said she was like, but you're the only one who can do it. Like I'm paraphrasing, but. But she had a posture of faith that if she can contact the Lord, then whatever she contacted the Lord for was going to be answered. Okay. You have to make sure you don't move to the next subject until God get, has given you time to say everything that you need to say that he has given as a burden to you. You don't just move on, especially when you're in a group prayer. You got to keep hitting that nail on the head. Until it's like a faucet. When God turns that faucet on, you need to flow in that until until you're done. When the faucet comes down, I don't care if you didn't reach all of your prayer points. When that faucet comes down, you need to stop because the spirit of intercession is gone. Yeah, they're not ready. Y'all not ready. Y'all not ready for me. Everything else will be the prophets of Baal sitting on top. With the altar, you cutting yourself trying to get God to answer. Y'all bleeding all over the altars and folks are screaming and yelling. You're doing all this and ain't no, ain't no anointing, ain't nothing. Y'all need to listen to me. Stay in tune with the flow. And if, if you're in a group prayer, there will be a spirit of intercession. I'm not saying that once person, once the faucet is off on another person, it will be off on the whole group. I'm saying once the faucet is off on that topic, that particular area, you need to know it's time to pass the torch. Don't be trying to stand up there with all of these fillers. We get all of these fillers, you know, that we're throwing out because we're done. 
You need to just go on and move out the way and let the next person and don't let the devil make you feel like the reason why we throw a lot of fillers in prayer is because we're embarrassed. We think we didn't, we didn't knock it out the park or we think we didn't say what we need to say or we feel like we might not have done a good job, but that's because the enemy is making you feel bad. But if the Lord brought something to your attention, if the Lord put something in your spirit, you release that thing while believing and you get off when it's time to get off. That's it. You're done. Don't don't listen to the enemy because the enemy will talk to you right after your prayer. Why? He's got to get you to be double-minded while you're in the atmosphere for answers. The Bible says the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and he expect not to receive anything from the Lord. So your expectancy that we just talked about, expect not to receive anything. Your expectancy drops and so does your answer or manifestation. Are you listening to me? Masterclass. Boom. Number nine. If possible, you should have your Bible with you. Now, this is what they do in our church. We have our Bibles or we have our phones. You'll see them praying. They'll have their phone in their hand. They got their Bible open. They got inspiration, things that the Lord dropped in their spirit to help them in this time of prayer. That is so important. It is so important that you have something to keep you on track. Sometimes we go off into this, I'm going to make my own path because the anointing feels good. The anointing has to be controlled because the anointing will participate with your flesh. Y'all need to listen to me. The anointing has to have a place to flow or it will be messy. It will flow all over the place. <laughs> Remember I said before, you're, you're okay to lose control in prayer, but you're not okay to lose control in the prophetic. One prophet prophesies, the other prophet must judge. Why? Because there has to be a measure of control in the prophetic. In prayer, it's between you and the Lord and the Holy Spirit. You got to trust the Holy Spirit and the Lord. You're in the water. You're in the river that flows from the throne. So you got to trust God to sustain you and to equip you while you're in this water. But you got to be in that thing all the way. There is no such thing as partial intercession. We treated it like that. I'm a, you know, I'm interceding, but you halfway in. Are you willing to die on this, this proclamation? Are you willing to die for this prayer answer? Are you, are you willing to give your life? Are you, are you giving your all? Even in worship, like worship you. I, I'm going to do a symposium on worship because I think people don't think I know about worship, but I know a whole lot about worship because I'm an, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm an apostle who worships. I worship the Lord. Now, I ain't got the best voice. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it just depends on the mics and the sound and, and where I'm at, right? If I can hear out the monitors and all, you know, there's a lot of dynamics to it. But at the end of the day, Worship is the same way. You've got to lose yourself. You've got to lose yourself. You can't control worship. And that's why Lucifer got kicked out. Another topic for another day. Number 10, our final one. When God ceases to bring things, when God ceases to bring things to your mind to pray for, you know, you uh, finish those things by praising and thanking God for what he has done and, re and, and reminding yourself that for, for, for from him and through him and to him are all things and to him be the glory forever. And we have to make sure that at the end of our intercession, after we've yielded to the control of the Holy Spirit, we've yielded to the power of God, we yielded to the system um, that God has given us to orchestrate this flow of prayer and receiving these answers for what God wants us to do and to be in the presence of God. We now go to the next level of saying thank you. God, thank you. I thank you so much for blessing me. I thank you so much for loving me. I thank you so much for leading me in this prayer time and allowing me um, to, to enter in. And so let's do this. Come on, let's pray together.
sembleando rushia la mandisha. Va sombro che le ama sombri che le arraba sopri ka. Va sombro che le arramo sombri kia. And you pray in the spirit to build yourself up. You pray in the spirit to build yourself up. And once you feel the level of faith welling up in your body, then you go into intercession. Then you go into thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. Father, I honor you. You are God. You are king. You are my king. You are my Lord. You are my source of life. You are my destination. I desire you. I am a part of you. I abide in you. You are my provision. You are my portion. You begin to allow God to receive your adoration. You begin to worship God and you allow the spirit of God to, to, to have time to speak to you in reference to whatever it is that on your heart that God wants to deal with. Or you say, God, I forgive so-and-so. So a lot of times pictures will come up. People will come up. Things that you felt you've gotten rid of, you did not get rid of. If they're popping up, the Holy Spirit is telling you, you need to deal with that. Okay? So you deal with it immediately. You know, you deal with it immediately. Once again, I said there's some things in intercession that will happen you can only effectively deal with the enemy in intercession. I already said that because you're completely yielded to the presence of God. Then you start your um, your renouncing. Then you start your now. Watch this in intercession. I'm not coming. I'm not coming to God for anything for me. Now, if he brings me up in in the time of conversation, if he brings me up in the moment of intercession, then I will pray there. But usually what happens is when you seek the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, those things that you need, they shall be added. So when you're seeking God and the kingdom, you're seeking him and his righteousness and you're saying, I want to do your will. I want to pray your kingdom. I want to pray according to your kingdom. I want to do those things. Then God automatically sends angels to begin to do what needs to be done on your behalf. By the time you get out of prayer, things happen. I'm trying to help you guys get, I'm, I'm so tired of people. Uh, I've had too many people come to me and they say, well, I'll be praying five hours, but you still got bad character. I've been praying five hours, but you're still stealing people's sheep. I got five hours, but you're still rejecting leadership. You're still, you know, you're underlining your undertones and everything that you're doing. You're praying all the time, but you're still devious. You're still, you still got discord on you. And how can you be praying and be in the presence of God and not be a contender for unity, a contender for submission, a contender for authority? You know, a lot of times people who say that they're in prayer. And the reason why is because you have not lost control yet in the presence of God. You're still keeping yourself. You have not died on the altar. You're the type of sacrifice that needs to be tied to the altar. You're the one that needs rope. I don't need no rope. I lay on there myself. I don't need no, I don't need no inspiration other than the fact that Jesus died for my sins and he gave me an opportunity to live. The only reason why, and that's why I present myself. Thank you so much. They're already sowing in the cash app. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much. And I'm telling you, you got to learn how to get on the altar and, and watch this. Watch this. And many of us are saying, well, well, intercession, watch this. Intercession in the tabernacle was represented by an altar. It was also represented by fire in the altar. It was also represented by incense being put on the altar. So if you really look at the altar, you're going to discover that there is a fire there. That means your prayer life has to have a fervency. And you're, you, and watch this. And there's going to be smoke. That means your prayer life has to have some glory in it. And the only way I found to, to get these these things, the fire of God, the glory of God, and the, the you know, and the gold, the divinity of God, the, the altar was made of gold, which represents the character, the divinity that he is God. That means my whole intercession experience is all about me coming to God, not me coming for myself. And you couldn't even get into that place without passing the altar, dealing with your flesh. Your concept, your ideas, your desires, your burdens, what you feel. I have I have realized, 
even in agape love, like even in experiencing anything that God wants us to move in, agape love will not happen until you lose control and allow God to love through you. Jesus said, a new commandment I've given unto you that you'll love one another as I have loved you. Jesus is not saying you love them the way I want you to love them or you forgive them the way. No, that's not how it works. Thank you so much. Someone else is so to see. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. But what people need to realize is, is that you have got to die. You have got to, you have got to be evicted if you expect to walk in this measure of power and authority and love and truth and, and without being contaminated. See, here's the deal. You can walk in power. Okay, okay, Lord, here we go. You can walk in power, but be contaminated. That's why the Bible says to cleanse thyself or to purge thyself of all filth, dirt, dinginess of flesh and spirit. Second Corinthians 7 and 1. Okay, we have to learn, and I'm giving y'all everything to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's giving scripture. He, he's doing everything. He's doing the teaching. I don't have time to play around with this. This is a serious matter. Now, I got a lot of scriptures I did not read. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen scriptures that I did not read, but I rattled off more than that. And I'm telling you that God wants us to, to move in effective intercession. That's why stuff ain't moving. You can try everything you want to, but there's some things you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to say, all right, Lord, I'm complete. You can't even say I'm a disciple. See, people think that because they're saved, they're disciples of Christ. No, you're not. No, you're not. The Bible says that Jesus said his disciples continue in the word. The Bible says that Jesus' disciples, the word abides in them. They abide in Christ. And when they pray, they get answers. They get answers. You, if you're a disciple of Jesus, I'm a disciple. I'm, I've had prophetic words before God even came. God, God's the one came to me and said, you an apostle. People didn't come to me and say, you apostle. My apostolic did not come from the proclamation or the implication of man. My op apostolic came from an intercession. I was in intercession. Reading. And receive the authority and the grace for and the gift for apostleship. To, to, to function and to be here and to receive the word. And it's all because, and watch it, uh, somebody else. So God bless you. Thank you for, thank you guys for being a blessing. I appreciate that. And the thing is like this, and may the Lord add it back to you. May the spirit of intercession fall upon you. May God activate you. Because I know that this video, even at the beginning, this video, watch this. Jesus is still in that ministry. The ministry of intercession belongs to Jesus. For the Bible says he forever liveth to make intercession for the saints. And if your intercession ministry is apart from tapping into what he's saying, tapping into Jesus came down to Abraham to show us an example of prayer and intercession. He said, shall we talk to Abraham who is our friend? He shared something with Abraham and allowed Abraham to communicate back. That's true intercession. That means you got to listen first. You got to wait to see if God's going to allow you into the conversation. <laughs> Woo, to God be the glory. This is a good class. This is a good class. This is a good class. Y'all didn't even have to pay $75 like some of these people be making y'all pay. Amen. And we're going to continue to deal with this topic. I'm going to deal with it. And I'm going to deal with the hindrances of intercession probably later this week. But I wanted to just give you the principles of effective intercession. I want to give you the goodies right here. And then we're going to start breaking this thing down. By the time we're done, you will become the Lord's prayer shawl. You'll be what's on him while he's interceding. The high priest carried the children of Israel on his shoulder. See, they're not ready for that. They're not ready for that type of stuff. Amen. Amen. Come on. Woo. My God, today, God is opening up that intercept, that pure realm, that pure realm. That pure realm of prayer and prophecy, that pure realm of authority, just clean, 
clean servants. You know, the Bible says in the house of God, there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. He said the vessels of dishonor can be purged or cleansed, you know. And so there are vessels that God is using. They dingy, they dirty, but you're going to be pure because you're going to lose control in the intercession. You're going to lose control to the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. You're going to don't try to go into prayer controlling it. I'm telling you, you're going to lose every time. Every time, every time. That's why we don't cry. We don't moan. We don't groan. We never even entered into that type of intercession with the Holy Spirit because we're too busy using our language. We still don't realize that we have a, another superior language to communicate directly to the Father. Thank you so much. Someone else sold to see to connect directly to the Father. And we're still trying to use our language because we're going through the prayer protocols. We still partner with the Holy Spirit, partner with the Son. When you can go directly to the Father with your tongue, that's what the Bible said. You talk directly to God. There's no prayer channels. Rasoko. No, no wonder tongues are so resisted in the body of Christ because the devil wants to cut off your access. And I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of it. As an apostle, I need you to be successful. Because when you're successful, we're all successful. And you can't deal with the spirit of racism without having a spirit of intercession. Uh, tapping into the anointing. Because that sucker is sitting over this country. Is sitting over this world. Racism isn't only in America. It's in this world. There's an elitism. And we're not going to be able to deal with it. You're not going to be able to deal aggressively with this enemy. If you don't have an effective intercession. Yes, go protest. Yes, go march. But my goodness, God. God today, yield your members unto righteousness. Yield your members unto the spirit. We don't war as those who are weapons of warfare that are carnal, but we war as those that are mighty in God, strong in God, possessing the tools of God. That's how we war. I move the hearts of law officials. I move the hearts of king. The Bible says as God moves the hearts of king, the, the rivers of water, so he moves the hearts of kings. You need to move the heart of kings. You need to move the heart of these officials. You need to start invoking your laws. Thank you, somebody else sold another seat. God bless you. You need to invoke the, the authority of the laws that God has given you as a kingdom citizen, but it doesn't happen from you just opening your mouth saying, I'm declaring and decreeing. No, you got to have the spirit of intercession. Before you declare and decree, you got to be in agreement first. When you are in agreement, then you now, I bind and loose. See, binding and loosing don't work without intercession. That's why Jesus said this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. When you're not, prayer and fasting is what was fine tuning the disciples for intercession. It was not making God do anything. It was not adding more power to them. It was basically saying this type of devil requires another level to the authority that you already possess, but you need to enter into another level of it. Every stage we're in has an infancy. So because God is always introducing us, I said that earlier in the video, to the unknown. So some things you're going to have to do. That's why Jesus says that count the cost. Why? Because the salvation is free. But the quality of that salvation, what you experience on this earth is going to have, there's some requirements. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to fast. Not because you're making God move anything. God's already moving. God already didn't move. God sits in heaven. He's sitting down because he didn't already move. Now, the main function of Jesus is praying because he already didn't move. Did you catch it? He's praying to make sure we realize it. He's praying to make sure we understand. As far as the protection of God, God's protection has always been solid. The devils could not touch Job because God has a strong protection. God, God ain't lacking in power. And Job did not have the Holy Spirit. That was before Job got the, that, we got the Holy Spirit. So I, I'm, as far as God's protective power, Job didn't get no armor. We got armor. Job got a hedge. And what I'm saying is you can tap into the old mechanisms. Man, I feel like preaching today. Good God. Today. You can tap into the ancient landmarks and the bound. And the, uh, come on. Raso Kolebanda. Which will lead you into 
but it's got to be intercession. You, you know, God is pushing you into to interceding. Okay. Now, listen, I love you guys. May the Lord bless you. Father, I thank you for every word spoken here today. I pray, Lord, that everything that I said here today would be used uh, for good reasons, for good good intentions. I pray that those who would try to hijack this message or steal this message or try to do whatever it is to, to propagate their ministry, I pray, Lord, that you would keep this message from false teachers, false prophets, false apostles, false leaders from trying to manipulate um, this message or even trying to steal it to make it look as that as though they are something that they're not. God, this message, this video came from you from your power, from your glory, from your love. And God, your glory is a guard. Your glory is my rear guard. It is a protective, it is a protective uh, presence and power and authority. And so Lord, I put that over this video and I thank you for those that are watching, Lord. May they be empowered. May they be blessed. May they be rashoko lemanda rabasa. May their prayer time be very, very effective this day in Jesus' name for the rest of their lives. And may you guys all tune in. I'll be doing another video probably Thursday about this time. These morning videos are kind of the best for me. All right. So probably Thursday morning about this time, I will be back. All right. I am your local and national, international friendly apostle and Dr. Jason Welsh from Amazing Church Lake Elsinore under the covering of He is Risen Tabernacle. We love you guys. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you just got on late, go back to the replay. Go back to the replay. There's some foundational things that I want to give. And once again, this video is not to step on any toes. I'm just giving biblical truths. I'm giving levels of understanding that are in tune, that are right for the word of God, the position of the word, and not just something we fabricate and we trying to make up just so that we can seem spiritual. All right. Love you guys. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Once again, if you if you're feeling like you want to be a blessing there, there's an opportunity there. There's something pinned there in the link. Amen. If this message was a blessing to you, just go ahead and inbox me. And for those who have been inboxing me, listen, the school is almost done. I'm almost done. OK, I've been putting some final touches and adding a few more things. I'm almost there. The associate is ready. The bachelor's is ready. So if you guys want to enroll and do all of that, we're doing a soft enrollment probably by the end of June. I'm going to do a soft enrollment for all of the students that are already in there. Love you guys. God bless. Really excited. Hope you're enjoying the material. We will add you to our community. We do have a community, uh, a messenger room where we will add you there. You can ask all your questions. I will be there to give you insight, any biblical topics and stuff pertaining to the, uh, the, the subject matter that you're encountering. Um, and even some other stuff. We'll talk about that, give you perspectives or whatever. I'm here for you. Um, I'm just, I stand on the side of the Bible. I don't stand on the side of anything else other than the word of God. So you're not going to get you know, anything biased from me, you're going to get Bible. So, uh, it may, it may make you feel good. It may not make you feel good, but I will talk to you. I, I respect people as humans. I don't disrespect people like that. You know, I don't be going around just, you know, talking down on people, but I do give, I, I do give biblical perspective. So I might say, well, I don't agree with that because of this, you know? So, but I love y'all. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious and kind to you and may the Lord give you peace for the rest of this day and for the rest of your lives. In Jesus' name, I love you guys. Share this. God bless.